in chapter three, we talked about the issues of knowing your customer for small banks. And now we're going to talk about the issue of knowing your customer's customer. Okay, so, but is it clear for banks how far they have to know their customer's customer? Well, I would say that banks are fully um, discovering and, and uh, analyzing that as well. I think uh, up until recently, it, it was really all about know your customer. So know who is the correspondent with whom you're establishing a relationship. Um, and there has been a lot of talks also during cybers mm -hmm. where there was more the expectation to start looking into know your customer's customer. Because it might be that you, that you have a legitimate relationship with a correspondent in a mature and in, into a low risk country, which is of course very, very good. Uh, but then it might be that down the line, downstream, mm -hmm. that correspondent might be exposing you to additional correspondence as well, more in high risk jurisdictions, which is of course something that you would want to know as a, as a financial institution. So are the regulators making it clear to the financial institutions what kind of checks they have to do? Like what kind of check is good enough? Well, what you see that's happening today is that banks already do that, but in a declarative way. So as part of the, the KYC checklist that they are sharing with the correspondents, you would have questions that would be um, asking for any, any kind of dealings or presence in high-risk jurisdictions or sanctioned countries. But the information which is today provided by the bank is, is purely declarative. So it will still uh, depend on the bank's risk appetite and their own risk assessment if and how they take this, they take this into account for further decision making. So what has SWIFT been doing in this area? I understand that you're involved in a lot of discussions at Cybos and you've been working on a number of solutions over the past few months. So what is it you've done in this space? Well, in that sense, SWIFT is, is quite unique because what we have um, developed as part of the, the KYC registry is, is what we call the SWIFT profile. And the SWIFT profile is basically providing traffic report based on, on SWIFT statistics, which is uh, providing factual information around a correspondent bank and his exposure towards sanctioned countries or high-risk jurisdictions. This is something which is, which is optional and the correspondent is free to share this with the bank that would be requesting for this kind of information. And the feedback that we received so far is that this is a game changer in the sense that it is really providing some, some evidence and, and some factual um, input that the bank can use as well as part of their risk-based assessment. So in chapter two, um, we talked about the challenges for big banks, and in chapter three, we talked about the issues for small banks. So when we're talking about know your customer's customer, are the issues the same for the big banks and the small banks? Well, I think it's, it's um, twofold in the sense that for the bigger banks, to the earlier discussion that we had, it's about transparency, knowing who your correspondent is. The SWIFT profile is basically providing, giving you an additional instrument that you can make part of your risk assessment to get a good understanding about who your correspondent is dealing with downstream as well. On the other side, if you would be talking about smaller correspondence, on the one way, this is, this is their ability as well to provide transparency, uh, but also a way to, to demonstrate their compliant behavior. And specifically, if you were to be a correspondent in, in a high-risk jurisdiction, this is also an enabler for you to establish correspondent banking relationship with the proof that you are compliant in terms of transaction banking activities. Okay. So now let's look towards the future. What do you expect the future of KYC compliance to, to look like? What do you think are going to be the big trends or the big deciding issues over the next few months? say next year or so? Well, I think 2015 will be, will be quite interesting. If, we look, if I look back at 2014, so there we, the, the banks are really dealing with, with KYC in a, in a very bilateral way with, with the inefficiencies, um, etc. This 2015 will be uh, from theory into, into practice. So to see what, did we, what have we seen around the utility models, around the utility approaches how banks are, are dealing with that one. What's also clear is that the regulation and regulatory landscape will continue to evolve. So in that sense, uh, any type of standard or baseline that we've put forward will continue to evolve. And there will also be expectations to, to go deeper into the correspondent banking space, similar to other type of segments where other utilities are also entering the market, where the community has the expectations to start linking and to start working towards interoperabilities.